This is Scotty Reed with a Black Talk Radio News report. Unlike unarmed mother, two security breaches at White House end without fatalities. Two recent security breaches at the White House involving two different men, both armed, one with a vehicle and one with a knife, according to officials, has people questioning the amount of force that was used to kill an unarmed black woman last year who made a mistake when she bumped a security barricade with her vehicle and in a panic drove away. After getting blocks away from the White House, she was eventually killed by security service agents and Capitol Police officers who were all cleared in the shooting by both departments and the U.S. Attorney for the district. In the security breaches involving the two men, the first man, 42-year-old Omar J. Gonzalez, armed with a knife, scaled the White House fence and darted across the lawn and was able to make it through the unlocked north portico doors of the building before officers tackled him to the floor and took him into custody without injuries. Gonzalez, who was from Copperas Cove, Texas, was transported to a nearby hospital after his arrest for mental evaluation. Everybody turn around, head out the gate here. You're going to have to go out to 17th Street, please. The Secret Service is coming under renewed scrutiny after a man scaled the White House fence and made it all the way through the front door before he was apprehended. President Barack Obama and his daughters had just left the White House when the intruder climbed the north fence, darted across the lawn and into the residence where agents nabbed him. The security breach triggered a rare evacuation of much of the White House. The Secret Service said the incident would be reviewed to ensure proper procedures were followed. The intruder was charged with unlawful entry into the White House complex and transported to a nearby hospital complaining of chest pain. Last week, the Secret Service apprehended a man who jumped over the same stretch of fence on the anniversary of the September 11th attack. In the second security breach, Less than 24 hours after the incident involving Gonzalez, a yet-to-be-identified man drove his car into a security gate and refused to get out of the vehicle, according to reports by CNN. He was finally apprehended while bomb technicians in full gear searched the vehicle as nearby streets were evacuated, according to reports. There were no reported injuries. We have this just into CNN. There's been a second security incident at the White House this weekend, and our Aaron McPike is there joining me on the phone to tell us. Oh, you're in person, not on the phone. What happened, Aaron? Well, Anna, this happened within the last hour or so, and a man in a car attempted to enter the barricaded part of the White House on the east side of the White House at 15th and E Streets. Now, Secret Service ordered him to stop. He did not do so. He didn't make it into the barricades, but then he was taken into custody, and he will be charged with unlawful entry, Anna. So another big breach just right. in the last two days, because, of course, last night, just after 7 p.m., and in fact, four minutes after President Obama left with his two daughters for Camp David for the weekend, an another man by the name of Omar Gonzalez, a 42-year-old man from Texas, scaled the fence right in front of the White House on the north side, and he ran up the, the lawn about 105 yards and entered through the front doors of the north portico, and that is when Secret Service apprehended him. They then took him via ambulance to George Washington University Medical Center. So in two days, Really, within the past 24 hours, there have been two major breaches of security at the White House. The Secret Service received praise for the restraint they showed in not using deadly force with Representative Jason Chaffetz, chairperson of the House subpanel on national security oversight, telling the Associated Press that these are good men and women, but the Secret Service leadership has a lot of questions to answer. The family of 34-year-old Miriam Carey and their supporters have questions as well about how officers could be praised for showing restraint in the amount of force used to apprehend these two men, but members of Congress gave a standing ovation after hearing the news of the killing of an unarmed mother with a child in her vehicle after a similar incident in 2013. On October the 3rd, 2013, 34-year-old Miriam Carey, a dental hygienist from Stanford, Connecticut, bumped into a security barrier outside the White House and apparently afraid of the officers with guns drawn surrounding her vehicle and attempting to open the doors of her vehicle, successfully drove away. As she was being pursued, officers on foot fired at her vehicle from behind several times despite knowing the child was in the back seat.
after getting blocks away from the White House, thus eliminating any possible perceived threat to the White House, officers made the decision to continue to chase Carrie in her vehicle at high speeds. Carrie's vehicle was finally stopped when she was killed, and an autopsy report said Carrie was shot multiple times from behind, including a shot to the back of the head, according to reports. Miraculously, Carrie's daughter was found physically unharmed in her car seat after witnessing her mother killed in the hell of gunfire. The Secret Service is currently under review for the two recent security breaches involving Gonzalez and the unidentified man in the vehicle, both of which did not end in any fatalities. This is Scotty Reed, Black Talk Radio News.